I think the focus is okay. So we're going to go up and get on with this video. The underground is ridiculously loud. So I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna quickly close my window. Hey what's up you guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing amazing. So I've made two videos over the last week. One was called How Suicide Changed My Life. The other was how to deal with loss by suicide. As a lot of you guys know, I have made a number of attempts on my own life. The more serious of which took place this year, which ultimately led to a hospital admission, followed by another hospital admission, followed by a third hospital admission. All of which happened between June and July this year. Today I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why I Think you should stay alive and the reasons why I'm going to be staying alive. If you haven't seen the other two videos I've released talking about these two subjects, I'd recommend checking them out. They will be linked in the description down below. My first bit of advice would be if you are feeling suicidal right here, right now, reach out for help. Reach out for support. Reach out to your friends and your family. Reach out to a helpline. Reach out to somebody because there are people out there who want to help you. I know how hard it is to deal with suicidal thoughts, both from my personal experience and loss by suicide. I have a number of friends who are actively suicidal. My entire life I've been very exposed to suicidal thoughts from about the age of 13. So I do know the personal feel and how it can affect you, which is why I feel like I am able to offer you some advice on this subject. If you are in an immediate crisis, please stop watching this video and go and seek some support. This video is not an alternative to professional therapy as I'm neither qualified nor a professional. Number one, you should carry on living because you are the only version of you. No one else can replace you in this world. You might feel unimportant, you might feel hopeless, you might feel like things are so bad that they're never gonna get better and I can tell you this, it's a hard journey. It's not gonna change overnight, no amount of things I say in this video will help. You will never be able to just transform your life overnight. That's not how it works. Another reason why I think you should stay alive is if you choose life over death, you are automatically taking control of your life. You're taking the control you need. A lot of the time you find people are suicidal because they feel out of control, they feel like they have have no control of their own personal circumstances, whether that from abuse, whether that from poor relationships, whether that be from other mental illness. People often feel suicidal because they feel a loss of control and by you deciding to live you are taking that control and doing positive with it. Suicide might feel like the only option but I promise you it isn't. It not only passes on your pain to someone else, it also cuts your life short. It stops you reaching your full potential and it shows everyone who made you feel the way you do that they was right and you want to be able to prove they are wrong and do that you need to carry on living. Most importantly, you need to carry on living for yourself. Fight for what you believe in, fight for what you feel is right. If there's someone in your life making you feel so badly that feel like suicide is the only option, cut them out, start talking to them. You don't need to give them a reason, you can just cut them off, you can block their number, block them on Facebook, block them on Twitter, block them on Instagram, you don't have to have contact with them. You are the only person in your life that matters. If it's a specific family member that is causing you harm or hurt, speak to them about it or do the same as you would with a friend. Cut them off. You don't have to surround yourself by that. Another bit of advice I have is get a therapist. Therapy helps enormously because not only does it give you a space to release all the negativity you are feeling, it also gives you the option to get some professional input. Just because you speak to someone about being suicidal does not mean they are going to hospitalise you. Hospitalisation is only ever used as a last resort and I have personally been there where I felt suicidal and I haven't been admitted to hospital. I've also been admitted to hospital when I didn't want to be. It is only used when nothing else will work. It is used when the risk is so high that they feel it's the only option. Another bit of advice from me would be to get rid of, if you've got a method in mind, get rid of the items, get rid of the objects, because chances are you don't need them around. If it's tablets, speak to your doctor about having the lesser prescription, like getting like three days worth. That's what I used to have. I now get 21 days worth, which is three weeks, which is the most I've ever been given in the last two years. And I feel great at the moment. That's why I'm allowed it. But I'm always told that if I need to lower my prescription in the future, I can, because I want to keep the risk to myself at a minimum. Keeping my risk managed is the most important thing for me, that is the thing that keeps me going. Not having access to lethal means of suicide means that I am safe. If you are thinking about doing something with rope, get rid of the rope. If you are thinking about using a firearm, if you're not in the UK, get rid of it. Get it out of your building. Keep it locked away and give someone else the key. Just make sure you don't have the item around. If you're thinking about using a knife, get rid of the knife, you don't need it. There are so many preventative measures you can put in place and I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's nowhere near easy, it's taken me a very long time 
time to be able to stand here and make these kinds of videos. But it is possible. You have to run to fight for it. You have to take control of your life and remove the things that are making you feel so bad. I know it's not a case of just getting over. You can't just get over feeling suicidal. It doesn't work like that. Never will. You are the creator of your life. You are the one that is in control of your life. Feeling suicidal is one of the hardest feelings to get over. Whether it's caused, whether it's whether it's because of your circumstances, whether it's because of past events, whether it's because you just feel that way. It is possible to get over because it's always, it's always possible to change your circumstances. You can get out of a situation if it's because of a relationship you're in. You can leave that. If it's because someone is treating you badly, you don't have to speak to that person whether it's family or not. People are equal in this world. If someone's making you feel a certain way, you have to take control of your life. The other thing I want to put in this video is don't let your mental health become your identity. And I was going to do a whole video about this and I decided to just put it in this one because I think it is so important. I have seen it far too often where people have been like, I can't do this because I'm suicidal. I can't do this because of this diagnosis. I can't do this because of this. And it turns into using mental health as a bit of an excuse. Some people let it become their career where they end up in, in and out of hospital, in and out of police custody. Like just, they let their mental health take such a big part of control in their life and it becomes the only thing they do. And I know this year a bit with me, I've been a bit of a victim as such to this. I'm glad I got out of that cycle because living where you think that other people can change your life is ridiculous. You are the only one with the power to change your mindset. Yes, medication can help ease symptoms. Yes, it can help. And I'm not disrespecting that. I'm not disrespecting anything anyone else says. I'm purely saying that you have to want to take the control. You have to want to not be in the circle. Like, if you want a life out of mental health services, it is possible. And it's possible very quickly if you are able to pick yourself up and do everything yourself without their input. Ultimately, you are responsible for your own circumstances. You are responsible for the situations you get put in. You are ultimately responsible for how you are. If you want to be happy and you want to do well, I'm not going to say your depression is just going to go or your mental illness is just going to go because mental health doesn't work like that. But if you want to have a life where you are in full control of it, you have to pick yourself up and basically give yourself a big kick up the ass because no one can do that for you. No one can tell you that you need to do this. Everyone can give you advice like, hey, you should get out more or hey, you should do this. You are the only person who can do it. Only you have the power to change your life and that's a fact. No amount of words that I say can change the circumstances you are in. You have to take control of that and you have to be willing to put in the work. There are many reasons why you should stay alive but the biggest reason you should stay alive is for you because you have the right to want to live. You shouldn't want to feel like you have to end your life and like I said at the start of the video if you genuinely feel at risk to yourself or to others. Reach out for help. There are plenty of organisations out there and it won't always end with the same response you think it will. It won't always result in police getting called. It won't always result in ambulances getting called. It won't always result in hospital. Sometimes having someone on the other end of a phone to talk to is great. For example, the Samaritans, I've called them a few times and they don't offer advice. They just give you a space to rant and talk about everything. If you need to just get it out, they are brilliant for that. They are amazing. And they don't contact the police. They don't contact any emergency service. There are services out there that will help. The NHS has also got a lot of different services. And while I'm aware that waiting lists are a huge thing. While well, I'm aware that they're not the best services out there, they're still there and they're there to be used. Be responsible for your own recovery. Take control of your life and build up to where you want to be. I think I got my point across with this video but what I'm trying to say is you have to fight for yourself. No one can build your life for you. No one can make you better. No one can tell you how to get over things. No one can tell you how to work through your anxiety or anything. You have to do it. If you want to overcome your anxiety, work on it yourself. Take it bit by bit. I'm not going to say it's going to go away really quickly, although it's possible to do all alone, because it's probably not. But you have to take the first steps and be responsible for it. I think I got my point across with this video and I hope you understand what I mean. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and leave some questions down below in the comments and I will answer them in a video. If you have any video ideas, also leave them down below because I'd like to know what your thoughts. Also, if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button because I make videos pretty often, like pretty much three times a week now, and it would mean a lot to me. Also, my new book is still out and is currently only $6.99. It's off. So if you guys would like that, the link will be in the description. It's also available on Kindle Limited for free. You're welcome. Uh, the links, as always, to everything are in the description down below. Follow me on my social media to stay up to date with what I do in my life, and I will see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.